Well, we're joined now by the director of the National Hurricane Center. We've got Jamie Rums on the line. Good afternoon, sir. We have been dealing with a lot of rain already today. We've got more on the way. I wanted to ask you, just talk to the source. Uh, what makes this storm so dangerous for our part of central Florida, and what makes it so different than Charlie in your experience, that 2004 hurricane? Oh, great question. I was here and, uh, for Charlie. The difference here is, uh, Ian, is, is very large, whereas Charlie was a very compact system. Also, Charlie really zipped across the state, whereas Ian is just going to crawl, crawl across the state, which is, uh, increases, and I, I really appreciate the coverage you were doing earlier on the, on the flood risk, because that slow forward speed is just going to dump a lot of rain uh, along the projected path. Jamie, can you talk about also the duration? Charlie seems to come in at a pretty good clip and it also left the region within a day or two. This one seems to be slowing down as it approaches. I know that is one of the drivers for, for the, the flood risk, right? It's simply raining for a longer time over a, a broader area. But with this slowing down with the wind effects, with the surge effects, uh, do you think people in this part of Central Florida have seen something like this in, in their lifetimes? It's going to depend on the situation. Some people may have experienced a, a hurricane of this magnitude, but certainly you haven't if you are new to the state. And a lot, we have a lot of new residents that have moved down over the last couple of years who have never seen anything like this. You know, the one thing I want to leave you with is this is our excessive rainfall outlook, which is effectively a, a flood risk outlook. You can see we're now at a high risk a uh, high risk of very heavy range. You covered it in your segment, uh, basically along the I-4 corridor, including Orlando. Jamie, I have time for one more question, and we're talking about the rain because we're looking at all the models. It probably seems like this will be one of the legacies of Hurricane Ian. But if this area of inland Florida that's had a very active rainy season with a saturated ground was to indeed pick up 20 inches of rain, what would that do to some neighborhoods beyond just the expected nuisance flooding? Could it be a lot worse? This is this is a great question. We're at the end of the wet season or the rainy season here in Florida. The grounds are already saturated. You dump this kind of rain on it and then put strong winds uh, through it. And then what you're looking at is a high potential for trees, trees to be uprooted, fall down, take out power lines, block roads. Then the roads are going to be flooded by the heavy rains. I don't think people appreciate just how long they're going to need to stay put to stay put. So as you make your final preparations this evening and first thing tomorrow, think about what you need for the next several days because this is not going to be in and out quickly. And even once it does pass, I'm not sure conditions are going to be safe for people to move about for quite some time. All right, Jamie Rum, thank you very much for your time on this. Um, it seems like the takeaway from this conversation is that we can expect extensive flooding and also extensive power outages thanks to fallen trees. All right, I appreciate your time. Thanks for all you do, and uh, good luck with this storm. We'll have continuing coverage coming up right after this.